Hi guys, it's Jenny with Art for Good. So in today's video, I am going to give you a good example of how you have to really just go with the flow sometimes when you're doing this art form. Uh, you may start out with having something in mind that you want to create, and then as it goes, a completely different uh, route is presented to you. And if you're so willing to just uh, be creative and open, it can be really, really interesting. So in this case, um, I am doing a, a double piece or a diptych, and I am doing two 16 by 20 uh, canvases here. As usual, I will put the exact recipe and all of the colors that I've used in the description below. I'm also using these pre-mixed deco art fluid paint pouring uh, bottles. I'm using gold, copper, and pearl. So if you're just new to this medium and you don't necessarily wanna mix your own paints, um, these are a great option for you. If you do uh, want to start mixing your own paints, which is a lot cheaper, I will put a link to the video right here. I'm also using a tiny bit of a dark green color that I used on a piece earlier. Just because sometimes when you're using a lot of light colors together um, or all metallics, you want a little bit of dimension in adding a darker color will do that. The same thing with this beige color. This was just one that I had left over that I thought I would throw in here. So I'm essentially setting up the base here to do a swipe over the center panel of these pieces. And what I'm using for my swipe is just white titanium white and a little bit of coconut oil hair serum. I'll put the exact brand in the description below, but it's a tiny bit thinner than my other colors and I'm using a uh, frosting spatula that I have now devoted to, to um, paint pouring just to uh, lightly move that white paint over the other colors. I'm doing a quick torch just to remove any bubbles and to help those cells form and the lacing to form from that white paint. I'm just trying to make it seem like these are kind of a continuous swipe. So I'm trying to make sure the colors match at least a little bit across. And then I'm going to just remove some of the paint to make it an even straight line. When I originally was starting to make this piece, I thought it would just be sort of an abstract piece um, with two different colors on each side of this sort of panel with some earth tones. But as you'll see as we get along, it is, it took an interesting turn, let's say that. For these two colors, I'm using on the top a uh, blue color that I've mixed myself. This is, I mixed with a little, with titanium white, some cerulean blue, a tiny bit of black just to give it a gray tone. And I think that was it in this color. And then for the bottom, I did the same with a titanium white, a tiny bit of black, and then I also did a uh, phyllo green so that I could do a kind of a gray base green just to give it a little bit of a different color than the top color.
So this is where I start to play with the composition a bit. Um, at this point, I'm still really unsure what I'm going for here. Um, I just realized that, you know, letting it have a little bit of uh, roughness, I guess is the right word, um, where it doesn't look quite like a straight line, it makes it a little more interesting. So I'm just doing that at this moment. A trick if you get some colors in an area that you don't want, like for example, if I got some dark green up in the top where I was hoping for a solid light blue color, you could just take your hand, a uh, clean hand, make sure that you wiped it off with a paper towel, there's no other paint colors on it, and just uh, press down on it or lightly tap it and pick up that color with your finger and then keep, keep cleaning it off with a paper towel in between. And that will allow you to really remove any sort of anomalies that you have in your painting. You can also use a spoon if you want, just the key is to make sure you wipe it off in between each time you touch it to the canvas. I decided to try and tilt it because I like the fact that it makes it look a little bit like a flame of some kind. It get, gets those little wispy areas on the sort of the top and the bottom of the piece. So now it kind of looks like flames who are opposite of each other, which makes it kind of interesting. So this is about the time when I realize that I'm starting to see something in this composition. I can almost see two dragons who are meeting in the center here. And it's a risk for me, right, to, to go that route because I am not great at realism and creating realistic painting, I, you know, painting with a paintbrush. I'm not the best at that. So, it's a risk I could totally go wrong here by doing that, but I go ahead and decide to do it. So I'm using a straw just to sort of elevate the head a little bit into more of a shape of a dragon's head. And then I use a little bit of the leftover blue to create an opening where the dragon's mouth is here. Also, it's hard to see because my head's in the way, but I'm using the straw to blow out some kind of wispy pieces like you would see on a dragon. So now I'm just adding an eye with a little bit of the blue paint. Just trying my best to get them to be perfectly symmetric. There are a little bit of differences, but you know, in a general sense. Now I've started going back in with my straw again, just to around the whole rest of the body, just to make it kind of wispy. I'm 
and almost makes it look like they are two flames, right? It's very interesting that the way that this is turning out this is one of the reasons why I love this medium so much because you can start out trying one thing and then it turns into something completely different, but it's also amazing, right? Okay, lastly, I'm just taking a skewer here and I'm going along the bottom just to make those little wispy hair-like things throughout, a little more defined. If you're interested in different types of swipes that maybe aren't this blend of realism into them, I have a lot of other videos. I actually have a playlist here. I'll put a link to of other swipe videos as well as kind of the tips and tricks on how to perfect the swipe. So after this is complete, after I'm done with the final details, I let this sit and dry for about three days so it's fully dry. And then I use a spray varnish to complete the, sort of seal them as well as to bring out the colors. If you're interested in framing these types of pieces, I also have some videos here on how I frame my pieces. I'll put a link right here. All right, and this is the final piece. I love, love, love the composition of this one. I, I think this is just so interesting. It can you know, from afar, just look like an abstract piece. It's sort of neutral, so it's not so, you know, ornate or so extreme that you wouldn't want to hang it in your house. But also it has those interesting uh, dragons in there, which I think would be a great conversation piece for your home. So if you decide to try this out, put in the comments uh, how it went, post a picture of it. Uh, or if you have any questions or any topics that you'd like for me to cover in the future, please put it there as well. That's all I have for today. I'll see you next time.